welcome to Help My Daughter Loves Horses, where we help you enjoy horses in a fun, safe way. So today, we're doing tack cleaning. And you can see I've got my bridle, my girth, my saddle, and my saddle pad. And they all need to be cleaned. Um, saddle pads, you'll notice, they're actually around to keep your saddle from getting as dirty as the saddle pad does. If you look on the inside, you can see all this dirt would have been on my saddle, but instead it's on my saddle pad. The nice thing about saddle pads, you can throw them straight into the washer and they get clean. So that'll go into the washing machine. Next, why don't we look at our bridle here. <clears throat> so you can see, bridle. First thing you'll notice, this is the bit. And the bit has all sorts of horse slobber, fun and other stuff on it. So there's two things you can do with this. You can either soak it in water or you can actually put it through a dishwasher. And that gets it really nice and clean. So in order to clean a bridle, of course, we have to take it apart. So I'm going to remove my bit, which means I have to undo all of the pieces holding it back together. So take the reins off the bit, and then we have to take the cheek pieces off. And there. And I'm going to let this soak. So I've got my water over here. We're gonna let that soak so I can scrub it clean. Now what I wanna do is, as scary as this might sound, is completely take apart the rest of my bridle. So that means undoing all the buckles, everything. Now, the first time you do this with the bridle, it might be a good idea to write down what holes all of your buckles are on. So if they're on the second from the top, if they're on the bottom one. So when you go to put your bridle back together, you put it back together in the right size. Very important to have a bridle be the right size for your horse. Now, I've done this enough, I know what settings my bridle is on for now. So, keep taking everything apart. I'm going to end up with one big pile of leather at the end. It takes some practice to be able to put a bridle back together, I can tell you that. There's so many pieces. And one of the reasons that you really want to take a bridle apart to clean it is that if you leave all the buckles in, you're never going to be able to get to any of the leather where the buckles are. And where those buckles are is one of the highest stress points for a piece of leather. And if you don't get in there and clean it, your leather is much more likely to crack and to break. And then you lose a bridle and you have to get a new one. So. Now I've got my bridle and all of my pieces. So the next step is to look at what we want to use to clean. This is Lexol Leather Cleaner. I really like Lexol, it works really well, it comes in a nice orange bottle. Um, and you just use this with warm water. I use it with a rag, but you can also use small sponges or different things like that to clean it with. So you get your rag wet, you don't want it soaking wet, you want it wet enough. And then what you'll do is you can either put the leather cleaner straight on the rag or you can put it straight onto your leather. So I'm going to squirt some leather cleaner onto my rag. And again, not too much, but enough that you can use it like soap. And I'm going to clean with firm pressure every surface of my leather. And again, you don't want too much water because water, as we know, is not good for leather. So you want it damp enough that you get some suds showing up, but not so damp that you're leaving the water puddles on your leather. And you can see, I've got my cloth folded over my fingers and I'm running that cloth with some pretty serious pressure on my leather. And you can, start to, you can already see all of that dirt and gross stuff coming off my leather. So you wanna keep applying leather cleaner because like soap, you run out of it as you use it. And I'm getting both sides of the leather. That's why I've got the cloth pinched between my hands so I can get both sides. And clean all of this. You want to focus, so any area that you've got, these are called keepers. Any area that there's a keeper, you want to make sure that you move the keeper from where it is and get underneath that area and get it nice and clean. Again, that's a really easy place for dirt to get stuck. It's got another piece of leather holding it in. 
We can clean all along here, get the insides of the keepers. Pretty much want to make sure you get every area. You also want to focus on any area of leather that um, gets a lot of contact with sweat. So horses sweat when they work, and things like nose bands that go around their nose, the insides of that often accumulate quite a bit of sweat and dirt. And again, that salty water is not good for leather, so we want to make sure we get off all of that sweat. So you want to go on your leather until you don't see any spots, you don't see specks of dirt, you've got that all cleaned off. So, you can see now, I've got a nice clean piece of leather here. Then what you want to do is a conditioner. A conditioner is different than a leather oil. A conditioner is going to preserve a leather, prevent it from cracking, restore pH. Um, and this you can put all over things. Um, again, you don't want to use too much, but you want to use enough that you get a little bit of a sheen on your leather. And you want a clean rag for that. So you can use a nice clean rag, squirt some conditioner into the rag, or you can squirt the conditioner onto the leather cleaner, or onto the leather that follows your cleaner. You'll notice I've got a towel down for things just like that, where I squirt leather conditioner all over everything. And you just run a couple of times. And you want enough that I don't know if you guys can see this, but that it's shiny. It looks a little wet. And then what you do is you just let that soak in. And really the goal is to put enough conditioner that by the time you finish a couple of coats, it stops sinking in. Because that sinking in is your leather being thirsty. It's getting dry. You want that conditioner to soak in and really let it you know, satisfy the thirst of your leather. It gets thirsty just like you. Now, another thing you can have is oil. So this is pure Neat's foot oil. It's a great thing to put on leather to really seal it. But now the thing with oil is it's a sealer. It goes over the top of your leather and it keeps moisture from leaking out. But you have to replace that moisture before you put an oil on. And that's the point of the conditioner. Now again, oil, you're not going to want to put on places like the seat of your saddle because all it's going to do is get the seat of your britches really, really dirty. So we want to avoid that. But you can of course put conditioner on there. Conditioner is a fine thing to have on the seat of a saddle. Because that's going to soak in and it's going to restore the moisture to your saddle. Unlike the oil that really sits on the surface of the oil, of the leather. So, next thing you got to do is you got to sit out and you got to clean all these pieces of leather. The last thing that you can do when you're cleaning tack is um, you can use a metal polish. And again, metal polish you only want to use on metal, hence the name, um, but anything like your buckles or say on your saddle of your rivets, you can, you can uh, work on that. Now another thing with a saddle, with oil, you really want to focus on putting oil on what's called the flesh side of leather. So that's the unfinished side of the leather. And that really lets it soak in. Um, and on your saddle, again, you want to focus on any area where there's lots of sweat, lots of contact with horse, the horse, um, and you want to really check over your tack anytime you're cleaning it to look for areas of damage. So looking for places that you've got cracks in a leather or you've got stitching coming undone because this is a great chance to notice that and fix it before it becomes a safety problem. The last thing is <clears throat> you might notice something like a girth, which goes around the horse's belly, gets really dirty. And this is the only place really that you would use a little bit more water to help dissolve that dirt. But you want to make sure you wipe off all of that water as soon as you use it. So, let's get going. Gotta get all this stuff cleaned.